We're reading Kaiju number eight. And we do an episode on Kaiju number eight. And, you know, we're just it's just manga reading it. And then it's just like, oh, yeah, we're yeah. talking to the man who literally <laughs> put the words on the page yeah. for us to consume. Yeah. This is this is a crazy. Hello and welcome to another episode of Volume One, the anime and manga podcast where we usually review the first volume of a brand new manga each week. But today we got a very, 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 very special guest. But before we introduce our guest, my name is Josh Magic Michaels, and today, as always, I am joined by <laughs> Megan Perrine. Uh, Cody Decker, we're not doing the. No, we don't have it. What do we? Say? Cody, we got to get to the guest, dude. Jesus Christ, dude, you're embarrassing me. Um, <laughs> today we have a very special guest. It's very funny how you know we came into contact with this individual. He is a someone who works on a project that is near and dear to all of our... I, I close my eyes when I get really into something. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> Could you hear you know, I'm really passionate. Could you hear Are you talking, talking shit? Are you talking shit? A little bit. Um, uh, he, you know, he, he came into our comment section. We had to vet him. We didn't believe it was him because, you know, it, it's... So many people can be so many people on the internet. And I was like, no way this guy. He's busy, dude. He's got his, you know, he's got his career. There's he's got no his... way this uh, this guy would be commenting on our video. Our video? Our video? What? Is, what? Huh? But he's a letterer for Kaiju number eight. He is, I believe he also does some translation too. Maybe not for Kaiju number eight, but I did do a little bit of research. Brandon's going to correct me and see if I'm wrong about that. <laughs> um, but let's welcome Brandon Bovia. Beep, 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 beep. Hey, how's it going, everybody? What's up, Glad Brandon? Glad to be here. Thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. um, Cody, Megan. Uh, do you guys have questions for Brandon? Because I have some questions for Brandon. And, you know, as a digital artist myself, dude, I dabble uh. a little bit, Brandon. I don't know if you know that about me. <laughs> um, but uh, for, I'm really curious to know sort of um, what goes into, and I know you've probably asked uh, answered this question multiple times um, on other podcasts and other things, but uh, I'm just curious to know what goes into lettering, how much like creative freedom you have, how you came uh, to, to work on this project. But I guess we'll start with... Um, lettering like how did you get into this how did you how did you discover this uh to answer the first question of, of how much creative uh work goes into lettering that of course the the easy answer is it depends um there's there are a lot of factors that go into the choices i can or cannot make uh you know depending on the project the publisher deadlines things like that um but I, in general i would say i have a pretty large swath of projects where i have a lot and some where i don't have as much um, but, you know, they all sort of, they all, they come with their pros and cons, I guess I'll say. Um, but I actually start, I got my start lettering because I drew my own comics in high school. Oh. And uh, because I, I was like, I want to make what, what I'm drawing to be as close to manga as possible. So even down to, you know, you know, just, you know, my, my personal art is very manga inspired. And while I was drawing that comic, I was, you know, looking at the lettering that I would see in like Shonen Jump and stuff and uh, just other officially released manga and be like, okay, I want to try to match this as close as I can. Yeah. Um, and it was really that experience. I did that for about three years. Um, and really, I think, I think by that point, that was uh, like six years before I became a literary for manga. But I think after drawing that comic in high school, I, ba I basically had all the skills I needed to get into lettering and then just nice. one uh I, I answered a uh uh seven seas uh manga publisher they put out a call for letterers on twitter one day uh and this was like 2016 <laughs> and i was like yeah sure whatever and then <laughs> uh, oops it became my entire career wow that's so cool yeah. though man i mean that's your job this you get paid to do this and that's like a yeah. dream come true i think for a lot of people me specifically but i'm sure people watching and listening too yeah, yeah. i always see yeah. your tweets and you're like just finish this amount of lettering and i'm like holy yeah, shit just, yeah. dude that's a lot even, of work even amongst my fellow letterers there are even just like how, how do you do that and i honestly i don't know I just get in the zone. Sometimes I just get I just get in the zone and I can just pump out. Auto like, zone. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Solid. All right. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's it's a lot. So kaiju number eight, like th that's it's so crazy to me how it's not because it's a great story, but just how fast it's started to blow up and how yeah. many people yeah, are yeah, getting into sure. it. Um, I mean, what does it feel like to be a part of that? You know, you have your hand in that. 
And I'm sure that has to be like super exciting, right? Yeah, it is honestly one, I, I think pretty much without a doubt is my favorite uh, project currently. Mm. Like, it is it is something that I look forward to working on every week. I love talking to people about it. I love, I love seeing the passion that the fans have for it because yeah. obviously when I, when I started working on it, I didn't, um, I didn't know it would blow up to this extent. And right. I, you know, I ne never once thought it's like, Oh yeah, this is going to be a million seller in like a month or something like that. Crazy. Uh, you know, I just, I, I get, you know, emails with cool projects and I'm like, Oh, this looks dope. Um, yeah. we, um, the, English version we started about a month after the Japanese and we did those first uh the first five chapters uh all at once so we you know when the English version started we were cut basically um but because we were started a month late the the pitch that I got from my editor Carla was basically just like yeah uh this every time a chapter has been coming out like it trends on Japanese Twitter every week and I'm like oh really <laughs> and, and there's just been sort of like okay this is sort of like this is something that has legs. Yeah. And well, that wouldn't have been like, I would have accepted the project regardless if I had been told that. Um, just, I, I, I say yes to pretty much everything unless I don't have time. <laughs> right. It is, it is very rare that I'll say no to something. Um, but it just, um, yeah, sometimes it's, it's just the right place, right time. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask you too. I mean, obviously, you know, you can, you can be as vague about it as possible if you want, but like, Based on how do you how does like getting a job for a specific series come about and like can you sort of look to Japan and see how a series is being received and say like I really want to work on that series because of how it's doing or mm -hmm. is it just kind of that you get a job and then you just have to kind of see what happens? Yeah, it's it's a little more of the latter. Uh, the way I would describe it is like we sort of get first right of refusal. Hmm. where we we I, I, I can name a couple of projects where i asked for it and i got it uh -huh. but for the most part it's just like an editor or somebody at a publisher you know they'll they'll go through their black book of freelancers you know both for translators and letterers and just be like okay maybe this would be a good fit for this person or just like we just need somebody to get this done yeah what um, are what are some of those projects yeah. that you asked for and you got i'm not sure i can say yet Oh, oh. There, there is, there is one for a, uh, a franchise I'm a big fan of that I, I think I might be able to talk about here soon. But nice. that's that is, exciting. I think, the only time. Um, and then there are others where I'm just like, I've gotten like a list before. It will be like, here's a list of five or ten manga. Just pick one or something. Um, and you know, I'll just I'll just pick whatever looks most interesting to me. But I think the most common is getting an email from a uh, like an editor or production manager from a publisher and be like, we have this and we want you to do it. Like it, mm. it's very just like, here's this one thing. Now, Brandon, let's get down to the nitty gritty, dude. Nitty -gritty. Um, I, I have some, some <laughs> questions pertaining to the Cody. Stop looking at me like that. I'm not um, doing anything. He so, wasn't doing anything. Okay. Um, some questions concerning the, like the art and how you get around, because I know sometimes in doing the research to prep for this, I was looking more into like what um, it takes to letter, especially something that comes from Japan, something that's something that yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. creating yourself, I guess. Um, and so how do you go about like painting out letters versus like, I'm also curious to know, like sometimes in a manga, and I think in Kaiju number eight, there are for like big sound effects, right? In yeah. the in the bars between the panels, there will be a, a note telling you what that sound effect is. But then in others, yep, yep. they'll take out the whole – they'll paint out, I'm assuming, the whole sound effect and then they'll yeah. translate that. So is that yep. up to you? Is that up to the the, the publisher or your editor? Who, who makes that call? It, it's definitely like a – it's like a, a mix between style guide and deadlines, right? Okay. So just as a blanket, I'll, I'll use uh, Viz and Shonen Jump for an example. Um, so how it works uh, with with Viz is that for all of the chapters that we're doing simultaneously with Japan, it's just like we subtitle the sound effect because we don't have time to we don't have time to fully replace the sound effects. Oh. And then if um, if something gets a print release, then we'll go back and. Uh, create full English sound effects. Interesting. Uh, the, the, most publishers do just like, even in print, they'll do subtitled sound effects, but you know, for, for Viz, they prefer that their letterers do, uh, that the, they completely replace and match the Japanese sound effects, you know? So it's just sort of down to, it's basically just sort of down to publisher preference and you gotta sort of have to learn how to like, okay, what is, what is the best way to 
create the product like within within those constraints you know so I, i've worked from the full um i've worked I've, I've done the like from run the gamut from just like here's a little simple subtitle that's just like in the same yeah. font for everything and then i've done some where the subtitles are styled to match the japanese but they're still there's still subtitles but they're like i get to pick fonts Yes, and yes. sort of just like I sort of make it blend into the artwork, and then there are some where mm-hmm. I just fully replace the sound effects in English. I got excited you because I'm a I'm a font guy. I'm a font font head. head. I'm a font <laughs> head. Yeah. You're a font yeah. head over here. Uh, and that's what I was going to ask you. You look at a lot of these um, panels, and they do seem to have a similar lettering style or similar font, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, so like, and, and I sent you a couple panels too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just kind of want to ask you because. Uh, I wanted to pick something from chapters that are, I don't know if you can, oh yeah, you can zoom. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I wanted to send you a couple just to that kind of show some different lettering styles and have some like translation yep. um, aspects. And this is uh, from Kaiju number eight. It'll be on the screen for people watching and listening. Yeah. And it's not spoilery. It's from the first couple mm-hmm. chapters. So, um, so that, uh, I think it's uh damn it that Kafka's yelling, damn it in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that a font? Is that something that you have designed or, or drawn yourself? And did you have uh, creative freedom of, of making it that way or did it come from someone yeah. else? Yeah. So I'll say that the, again, this is the, the rule with um, the, the Viz style guys for Simul Pubs is that while sound effects are subtitled, anything like a sound effect that occurs inside a word balloon still has to be replaced. Mm. So, you know, like the uh, the original, that, that damn it, that was like hand drawn into the Japanese inside of that word balloon. So I had to take measure to sort of like, I can pick out the fonts, I can sort of, I can, I have to figure out on my own, you know, how I want to distort it to make it look cool. Right. And and things like that. I personally don't really like breaking up words like that, mm-hmm. uh, as the, the viewers can see, because it's it's like breaking up into damn hyphen mitt. Yeah. And <laughs> that's just because of like the space constraints, because, right. you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of time because Japanese, you know, is in the context of manga and in literature, it's written left to right and uh, vertically. Right. Mm -hmm. So that means that all of the word balloons, or not all the time, but are often in manga, they are taller than they are wide. Right. Mm. Whereas, you know, if you look at like English comics, you know, because they're designed for the English language, all the word balloons are like wide and fat, but they're not that tall. Right. So that, that is the most consistent constraint with just the, in, the manga in general that is just like I, I i can't fight the concept of the english language basically yeah and so there's a lot of like we gotta have to cheat the fit sometimes i was gonna ask you about that too um obviously you know the mangakas the people that are creating these um they know what they're doing right obviously yeah. especially with kaiju number eight but i just you know wonder if at times it's ever I, and, and it probably is more of a challenge, I guess, than anything. But is it ever frustrating sometimes to have to work in these constraints? If you're illustrating your own comic, then you can mm-hmm. decide where the word bubbles go, how big they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. you're sort of like you have this structure that you have to follow. Does that ever get mm-hmm. like a little like frustrating sometimes, <laughs> or is it just like a creative challenge? I guess it more ends up being a creative challenge rather than a frustration. There are definitely uh, there are some manga I work on where it's just like. <laughs> it is just impo- like it is just inherently incompatible with the English language, right. and so the uh, the end result is that the English can look kind of kind of ugly, in my opinion. And it's just like, well, it's it's sort of either this or nothing, right? Um, and uh, depending on who I'm working with, you know, I uh, I can tell when a, a translator is um, when they are aware of the space that they're working within. And you know, uh. Uh, David, the translator for Kaiju Number Eight, is really really good with this. So there are. I, I would say almost never do I have just like fitting issues where I'm just like, oh, the the translator wrote a novel and I have to fit it into this tiny little like like sub <laughs> sub sandwich shaped word balloon. I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. But, um, to, but to that so, point yeah. though of of painting stuff out too, if you look on that same page, there is a a a, a line uh, that starts with I can't protect, right? And if you yeah. look at that, there's no word bubble behind that. So yeah. I wonder how you go about, do you, is there anything you have to redraw or paint out or does that come to you um, painted out or is that up to you to do? Most, most manga, I would say about from 2010 onwards do come with, uh, the dialogue text is either removed before it gets to us or it's on a separate layer so we can remove it ourselves. Ah. Or it's just like not, it's, it's usually not an issue. 
Um, but you know, things like sound effects and other sort of like background text elements are very, very often still, you know, they're, they're, they are hard baked into the artwork. So right. mm. um, that first panel there where it's like, we regret to inform you that you have not passed. That part I did have to, I had to redraw uh, and it's, you know, it, it's over screen tone where it's like this gray tone. So I have to sort of like, I have to sample a bunch of the dots and then just sort mm. of like paste it over and over again. Uh, and then put the English text on top of it, which um, I've gotten really fast at. Yeah, <laughs> uh, proficient. It was definitely, yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, all of the other text, all the like all the dialogue text, where he's like, I haven't changed a bit. I can't predict anything. That stuff, I don't have to worry about. That comes clean. Um, but I have definitely, I have worked on manga made before 2010, where it's like, yeah, the whole thing's flattened and you just got to deal with it. That's what I was going to say for more traditional, <laughs> yeah. especially if they're working in a traditional medium as opposed to a digital, then it's yeah. got to be yeah, everything's yeah, yeah. kind of baked in if it's, yeah. if it's the other way. Have you ever been like uh, reading something and then distracted by lettering that maybe wasn't great? Yeah, yeah. I was about to ask All that. Time. <laughs> I was about to ask I definitely, that. I won't name names. I, I, I'm not going to name names. Could you like, oh, could you like imply? Shit. Can you like just say the like first metaphor, letter and then we like, might know it? Oh yeah, no, do like pig no. Latin. You know, uh, like, like a like, vague, like, oh, uh, this manga with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like the first character, main character looks like this. Yeah. You know. I'll say in, in oh. broad strokes, um, the the art of manga lettering has come a long way in the past like 10 15 years mm -hmm. whereas i think a lot of stuff like because um uh, around like the mid to late 90s up through the 2000s you know uh like even even manga was localized and lettered by hand you know where they would have folks come in and you know just like you got a you got a bottle of whiteout and you just go. Oh, yeah. um, you know we're, we're talking crazy. like that traditional. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely there's that period in like the late '90s to early 2000s where a lot of folks start transitioning over to using digital tools like Photoshop and stuff. Um, and it's sort of it's sort of a wild west. I think I think mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a chunk of not not everything, but definitely you know like 2000 to you know 2005 2007 or so where there's just like you can. You're just, I, I can respect it from the era that it's from. And I grew up on a lot of that yeah. stuff. But I'm just like, I'm I'm really happy I have the opportunity to, I guess, pursue what I believe to be like. This is what I think a manga, what a, a lettered manga should look like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a, a yeah. lot of people, I'm sure, you know, maybe not notice certain things, maybe don't notice certain things. But I think it's like um, similar to how people say like a, a, a good visual effect or a good CGI is you. It's good yeah. because you don't notice it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. That's exactly right. It. Yeah. And so like people don't are, aren't aware, I think, sometimes of how like even back to that that damn it word bubble that uh, I mean, that's like you have to you have to fit that in there. Like you said, split the word up. It has to fill the bubble. Yeah. It has to be, you know, it can't you can't just slap it in there and have all this. Yeah, empty exactly. space. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. people, like, I feel, just like take it for granted. They're like, the English is on the page. Perfect. Yeah. yeah it doesn't yeah. matter what like, it looks you'll, like. Yeah. You'll read it for a second and you will yeah. we'll move on. And that's sort of I. I, will, I love to take the opportunity to point out the choices that I'm making. You know, I, I do that yeah. all the time on Twitter and stuff. Um, but it's sort of, you know, I I like that, like the reader's experience should be seamless. You know, they yeah. shouldn't be thinking, you know, like, like the average person shouldn't be worried about like the lettering or like they shouldn't, it shouldn't be distracting. So I, I very much try to make it as, as natural of a reading experience as, as I can. Are you a Clip Studio paint guy or a no, Photoshop okay. guy? Okay. Do you know uh, color I'm, theory? Uh, I'm a Photoshop guy, but oh, yeah, um, there we I go. have some letterer friends who swear by Clip <laughs> Studio. I use it. I, I use it in my work for just, there are some features that it does a lot better than Photoshop. So I'll, I'll sort of slide over to there, but uh, and Photoshop's been my bread, my bread and butter for like 15 years. So Same, dude. I'm addicted. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I hate Adobe, but I keep paying for it. <laughs> dude, same. I've used that little Basically. lasso tool. Oh, <laughs> he's a pro. Right? Hey, that, that, the lasso tool comes in handy. Yeah, it does. I mean, how how do you think I erase the Japanese on on the, the page of Kafka screaming? Ah. There we go. It wasn't as dumb as it seemed. Lasso tool, baby. <laughs> 
So what's your favorite tool for lettering? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cody, Cody, chill with the chill, hard hitting. Cody, chill, Cody, dude. Cody. You don't have to get too specific if you're going to like, uh, you know, you don't want to hurt other well, people's feelings. But I think favorite and uh, the ones that I have to use are two different things because I, I refuse to call any Adobe product my favorite, but I use them because they're there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Now, speaking of cutting stuff out, dude, I have one oh, more panel. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to cut all Cody's questions out of this oh, video. No. Um, <laughs> no, um in the in the next panel that I sent you on the uh, on the um billboard in the background there's a there's a Japanese yeah. defense F- force billboard. Was yep. that translated because that has yeah. art behind it. So it, when you originally in the Japanese version is that in English or mm-hmm. did you have to go back and change that? Uh I had to go back and change it. Oh. Uh, and and even even more um that was actually <laughs> it was actually a, a uh, that sign originally didn't have any text on it. Um, oh. mm. in, in the initial release version, um, like even even in Japanese, and so wow. we, we sort of got like an updated version of that page. It was like, hey, we got to go back and add this sign. It was like, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that that has happened a couple of times where we've had to go like we get sort of just like, hey, the author changed this, so you know we have to go go back and update it. And so uh, I would say that like especially for uh, for manga simul pubs, there's a lot of like yeah. knowing where to pick your battles. Mm-hmm. So I would I would sort of like to think of it like what are the text aspects uh, that are crucial to understanding the story because you'll you'll notice that there are there are some bits that are just like subtitled that they'll just have a little note to it like mm-hmm. uh, you know there's like a bottle that Kafka drinks in the first chapter that it's like well we don't really need like it's right. it's nice <laughs> that the reader can read it but it's not like it doesn't need to be replaced for that full immersive experience. I I don't know if that's something I'm gonna have to replace uh, for the volume version, but that was like, I think I, I think there's sort of a choice you have to make of like, is this adequate? Can this fit into a subtitle, or like like the um the Japan Defense Force billboard? Mm-hmm. Like if yeah. we had just subtitled it, I think the the subtitle would be so far away uh, because it's like right there in the middle of the panel, and we have to put this like the subtitle in like the uh, panel margins. Yeah. Right? So it would just be like, uh, I think visually it would be too far from what it is subtitling. So uh, it, w- it wasn't necessarily my choice to, you know, replace the text. Like my editor came to me, was like, hey, right. can you fix that? Or yeah. can you add the English text for that? And I was like, yeah, sure. And, you know, that just, it's a, it's a choice I agree with. And it takes like five minutes. So, so you know, I'm not like, how dare they? <laughs> yeah. And, and do you like usually anticipate a lot of changes before the volume gets released? Because I know Kaiju number eight doesn't have any uh, volumes, you know, translated like physical copies yet. I'm yeah. sure soon. Um, if you could give us that information. The Amazon page yeah. says like December 4th or something. Uh, so I'm, I, I don't have right any other. <laughs> No, no inside info. It's just sort of like I, I, I guess that's the. the but they, they said fall. That was inside you know, info to me. Break, so breaking thank you. news: December first. Yeah, you heard it here yeah, first. Something, something like that. There, there is a phone. publicly viewable page. That's just <laughs> that is the actual date. Is it usually a lot that you're having to go back and change for the volume? Um, it, it's sort of like it's a back and forth. You know, like mm. I, it, it, it's sort of like how do I put it? I mean, I, I'm basically just I'm basically just sort of implementing all of the changes that like the 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 editorial folks want. So whether or not that's a lot or a little, you know, of course, with uh, like Shonen Jump graphic novels and you know stuff for Viz Media, that usually it, it sort of becomes the implication of like, hey, you're going to go back and do all the sound effects in English this time, uh... and the amount of extra stuff on top of that really it really depends. Back to Kaiju Number Eight, real quick. When you when you decided to to work on that series and you said that you've gotten the chance to work on specific series that you've wanted to work on um yeah. what happens if like let's say me and you are in the office you know we're, we're in yeah. a meeting and, and i'm like i'm yeah. like hey, brandon i want that series dude i you know if, <laughs> if, if two people want to letter the same thing like what are some of those deciding factors that go into like who gets or is, or is it like between the two of us we have to be like all right you got i got kaiju, you got kaiju number eight let me have this one i mean those are those are all choices that the the editors make the the um uh, the editors for a particular series they're the ones who get to choose which freelancers they get to work with right so i think by the time i would say for i don't know i'll throw out a number like 90 percent of the time if there's the project that i want to work on 
that usually if I, if I know that it's a thing that usually means it's too late <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that that sort of stuff is usually decided uh you know before the project is announced or maybe, maybe sometimes sometimes after I, I've I've definitely, I've heard of situations of people coming to my editors asking for stuff that I already got assigned and I'm like, hey, back off. Oh, hey. <laughs> like, this, one's, this one's mine. About to square up right that, now. That, those, the, the ink has been dried on those contracts. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think there's ever been a situation where like that decision hasn't been made yet. No. And I'm like fighting somebody else to, for, uh, for a position to let her series. It, it really is, from my perspective, it is as simple as like, Somebody comes to me with a job and I get to say yes or no. Nice. Mm. More or less. Have you uh, wanted to do like uh, a manga and then you saw someone else got it done and you read it and you're like, oh, I can't believe they put sound effects there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Salty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to think every, every letterer and, and really just every, every sort of professional in general, you know, I, I, I bet translators and editors and folks do this all the time where it's like, this is a part of our brain that we can't shut off. You know, yeah. I'm always, I'm always critiquing the or maybe critiquing is not the right word but i'm looking at the choices that are getting made and i'll, I'll sometimes go like oh yeah i agree with that or being like ah, i don't know if i would have done that but i'm like hey that's that's valid maybe not what i would have done but i respect it <laughs> yeah and that's that's basically it's just a constant whenever i'm reading yeah. manga in english yeah. yeah i mean that's yeah and, and i'm sure people do the same for oh, i know people do the same for the stuff i work on where I, i've gotten comments from you know my fellow letterers are just like ah i wouldn't have made that decision and i'm like yeah that's too bad <laughs> that's too yeah bad. that's too bad i'm that's doing it bad. though so sorry yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's just sort of like hey you know what that that's just how it is yeah i mean it's natural to compare i guess and you're just looking and seeing what you would have done it's not like you're necessarily judging their choice yeah but you're like yeah i, I think, don't know if i would have done it that way yeah I, th I think coming at it from a place of respect is really important though yeah uh, of coming at it from a place of like hey and 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 honestly I would say most of the time I'm not vocalizing those things. You know, right. I'm not, I'm not going, going like behind my back to my letter of friends. Like, right. Hey, I think your work sucks. <laughs> or like it's just like, I think it's really, it, it's sort of fun in a way uh, of just like sort of breaking down what decisions are being made when it comes to the, the visual identity of a manga and being like, Hey, that's something I really like. And Hey, maybe that's something I don't. Um, Oftentimes, I will I will see a a letterer use a like a particular font in a particular way, and then I'll just be like, "Well, I'm going to go buy that now." <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I I like to think that we're all sort of learning from each other. You know, we're all sort of like pushing each other. At, le at least to the at least with the letterers that I'm friends with. You know, I'm, I'm not like oh, I'm connected all across the industry or anything like that. But yeah, I think there's a that's another benefit of being really open about the choices that you're making and really being mm. like, Hey, this is how I did this this way. Maybe this can help you whenever you come across this. And yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, I would say I'm a, I'm a product of, of the folks that I'm friends with, you know? Yeah, right. for sure. We read a, a series called St. Young Men, right? It's about Buddha yeah. and Jesus living yeah. together. It's very funny, very cool. Um, but as we were reading it, one of the things that we talked about in the episode was, the translation, it's its its comedy, it's humor, and for humor to yeah. land, I think a lot of the time, it's very dependent on sometimes in, in that series specifically, your cultural knowledge and yes, yeah, you know yeah. your ability to sort of like read what's on a shirt or what's on a billboard or something. And yeah. so the way they decided to structure it was by putting all the, the translation notes at the end of each chapter. And I, I was telling yep. Cody that like for me, if I maybe had them before or if I had them on the page – it might have helped the joke because in, in yeah. that moment I didn't get it and I had to wait till the yeah. end of the chapter. So how do you like personal preference? How do you feel about like handling that? Humor is really difficult. And yeah. honestly, that's sort of one of those things like where, where you get to place the notes and stuff like that. That's I, I would go out on a limb and say, that's probably not a choice that the letter obeyed. Sure. Mm. But yeah, it is definitely one of those sorts of things where those, uh, I think context is really important where if, if there is a joke, then maybe you want to like massage the text in a way that it is immediately understood. But you also don't want to like, you don't want notes all over the page yeah, because it'll be distracting. So it's sort of like a, well, every, every sort of outcome has their own pros and cons or like, Hey, maybe you could replace all the text elements, but it would take forever. And you know, that's just sort of not reasonable within like the time that you have. Mm. So it's just sort of like, you really have to work within the constraints you're given sometimes. Yeah. Like there's no, oftentimes no answer that is a hundred percent perfect. 
Now, Brandon, this is going to, you're going to, Megan has a question that she has um, prepared for you um, because we, in doing some of our research, we saw that there is a series that you have worked on. And, um, you know, I just want you to be honest. And, I, you know, you don't, have to take, you don't have to take sides. This isn't about yeah. sides, you know. Um, but, Megan, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Okay. So, <laughs> I saw on your website um, that you had worked with Sekai Project on a, the Clonod mm-hmm. anthology manga. And I know that, yeah. I, I'm not sure, I, I, looked, I was looking up uh, some research and I saw that it wasn't necessarily canon. It was just, like, mm-hmm. fan stories. But... My main question is, uh, did you like the series? Because I am a huge Clannad head. Like, that is my favorite oh, anime ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these two make fun of me because they I think it's funny. <laughs> you do! No, he does. Both of you. No, I don't. Anyway, did you like yeah. it? And uh, did you think it was ugly? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I don't know anything about Clannad. So, oh. I'm, 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 I'm not, I, don't, I don't have a dog in that fight. And that, that project Ooh. was like, it was like five or six pages of content over a weekend. Uh-huh. Uh, like I was like, I don't know. That was even before I was like lettering as a pro. It was just oh sort of, really? Was, I, I I've never I never worked with Sekai Project before or after that. It was a super super weird one off thing. Uh, <laughs> and then and then and then I, I bought a Wii U with with that money that I got. Hey, from it. hey there you go. <laughs> so how long ago? How long ago was that? Just because that I that was 2015 or 20? No, definitely 2015. Yeah. Oh okay. I know. I saw yeah, it so on was, Steam. And I was like, I might yeah, as well. I'm yeah. gonna probably buy it. It was, yeah. it was like, <laughs> oh, no. it was like some Kickstarter reward thing. I don't. It was super weird. Uh, yeah, and I just sort of I got rubbed into it, and then I did it, and then oh. never. I never heard back uh, from her since. But oh, yeah. apparently, uh, what uh, it was, it was through me bitching that I was doing that work for that one weekend mm. that caused um, David Evelyn, who is the you know, the translator for Gaijin Number Eight, like he worked with. Uh, Sekai Project because I mentioned that I was doing one thing for them over a weekend oh, wow. and I think he still has a working relationship with them. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's super weird how that stuff just sort of works out. Yeah, right, that was that was that my hard hitting. Oh, I Josh. have one more question as well. Uh-huh. Should I ask this now? Yeah. Yes. yes. About Kaiju number eight. Okay. This is hard hitting question. This is what people want to hear. Here we go. Who is your favorite character in Kaiju number eight oh. so far? So far. I, mm, I know there's a lot of I good did- ones. There's everybody's so Everyone's good. I didn't so think it good. would turn out this way. I did not expect to like this oh. character as much as I do. I think it's Hoshina. I think Hoshina is my favorite. Oh, yeah. okay. just, I, I I didn't even think he was gonna stick around. I thought he was just like, oh, he's the he's the character who laughs at Kafka during the test, and it's just like, oh, he's actually sick though. He <laughs> is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He yeah. totally it was, is. I, I think it is. It might be the element of surprise that has been sort of like I I didn't expect anything. Or that this character would even stick around, and then he's just sort of like, "Oh, he's amazing." So yeah, there's so I every I definitely every have a character soft spot in that him. series is so awesome, man. I mean, it's just yes. so connecting with. Um, I mean, you know, older protagonists, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, every everybody from like Reno, everybody. It's just so fun yeah. to read, yeah. and and I mean, it's got to be so much fun every week. I mean, you get a you get a one week. Um, you get you get it one week early, right? That's got to be kind of nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <sighs> these these uh, last few chapters have been really rough. <laughs> so just sort of like, all right, I finished it, and then I just got to sit. I mean, uh, not not the upcoming one. I'm referring to like chapter thirty one, thirty two, mm-hmm. when uh, you know at, at the the end of the big battle, you know, when Kafka finally transforms in front of everybody. And knowing that for a week or two ahead of time, I was just sort of like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's got to be so hard to not. I mean, obviously, you're not going to spoil anything, but just sitting on it, it's just like, yeah, yeah. it's got to be hard. I'm, sometimes. I'm glad I have David to talk to about these chapters because it's just like I need I need somebody to just like, ah. Yeah. And do you ever totally. like do you ever like wish like things that you really like, like, if, for instance, like Kaiju number eight, like you wish that yeah. you could just read it as a consumer versus oh, like actually. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh, I wish I could have just seen this without having yeah. to do it five times and knowing the line in your brain and in the memory like obviously i'm in a really unique spot where i i get to i get to sort of watch the story play out in slow motion because i'm sitting here like you know pasting text line by line and i'm just like oh okay this is what's happening and then i i you know i have to i really have to focus in on the text panel by panel you know word balloon by word balloon so i'm sort of just like I'm, i'm just soaking in the story and it just feels when I get really invested in one that I'm working on like that, it's just like, it is so fun. So it, have is, you, it is great. 
Have yeah. you been in the middle of lettering something and then you like realize that a huge plot twist? And then you yeah. like, uh, like, damn. like as you're doing Depending it? on the series, I guess I'll like uh for some stuff, especially stuff that's really wordy and you know, maybe I'm sort of like I'm enjoying it, but I'm not like super into it. Uh I'll I'll sort of like I start to zone out with the dialogue mm-hmm. and I, I just I start to see it as like like the text shapes basically like I, i'm not I'm, I'm not reading it i'm just i'm looking at how the words should be arranged in the most uh like appealing way possible and i'm just sort of like mm. i'm just turning my brain off and going through it basically yeah. um, and then you know sometimes i'll turn the page and be like wait hold on something really important just happened <laughs> brandon we don't want to keep you for too much longer but i do want to know if somebody you know watching listening you know maybe someone that you're talking to right now um <laughs> ever with you know very proficient in photoshop uh if someone wanted to like get into sort of what you do um like yeah. how how did you get into it or what are some of the steps that people can take to 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 do to to do that to do lettering uh, mm-hmm. because i'm oh, man i'm sure a lot of people want to know maybe you know this guy <laughs> <laughs> i would say uh don't worry so much about lettering speci- uh lettering experience specifically uh what a lot of publishers are looking for is just sort of like general graphic design know-how like like taste for lack of a better word of just like knowing Mm. how to make text look good what looks good what makes text appealing to read um and just sort of like basic software know-how like uh i i use primarily uh you know photoshop and uh indesign uh day to day but i i really (laughs) i didn't know that much about indesign starting out i i sort of I sort of fumbled around and was yeah. like, ah, I, I figured it out as I went along, uh, basically. Yeah. But it, it definitely was my my strong my stronger Photoshop skills that carried me. Um, yeah. But as for actually, like, if you have those skills, actually getting work is the really hard part. Yeah. Because you basically have to, there's a lot of uh, timing that goes into it. And, and a lot of just, like, putting yourself out there, making yourself known that this is what you want to do. Right. Uh, is I, I've definitely, I, I've met folks who, you know, they, they approached me as somebody who wanted to get into lettering. And mm-hmm. then, you know, maybe they become more involved. You know, they we, we follow each other on Twitter. They follow a bunch of letterers on Twitter and we're all like sort of exchanging advice. And I, I've seen people go from fan to pro in that way. Wow. It just sort of, it just sort of takes like, you have you have to let people know what it is that you want to do, and you have to keep doing that and hoping that you can come across like like people will you know give like if they're too busy for something maybe they'll forward an opportunity to you like hey I know a guy who's just waiting to get started and yeah then, um, like that it's really just like that first getting your foot in the door that's yeah, the hard part yeah yeah, yeah and I'm and sure having connections that, too mm-hmm. is is helpful yeah basically I. <laughs> Uh, I basically work for um, seven manga publishers at this point. Wow. <laughs> like most, most, of the, most of the manga industry at this point. <laughs> hey, uh, now but... humble brag, humble brag. Only one of them, uh, Seven Seas, was the only one that I got in through like a cold call. And the yeah. rest was just sort of like, like I got I got into Viz after like my first Seven Seas book. I was like, I've lettered literally one manga. Please hire me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just it, it, it worked weirdly. So it's just everybody has their different weird path through this sort of thing. So it's hard for really be like do yeah. this do this 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 and this and you'll be guaranteed a, a job freelancing in the manga industry. And yeah, yeah, I think I think freelance is the important part because this work is all freelance. So it is a lot of just like. Folks are looking for somebody who can do the job and are easy to work with. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think yeah. I heard like a, a Neil Gaiman um, interview where he was talking about writing and he said basically like out of the three things, you're punctual, you're easy to work with. And there's like one more. I forget. He's like, but you only he's like, you only have to be two out of the three. <laughs> you're a baller. <laughs> Baller's number three. Would, Baller's would, number would, three. So it's yeah. a punctual, easy to work with. If I had, a, if I had a, a third one, I would say speed. Speed. Oh, mm-hmm. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Especially, Especially with that turnaround. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even yeah. noticing it now, just in anime in general, like the spike of how many shows they're doing per season yeah, and how yeah, many yeah, mangas yeah. are and coming out. Like the demand yeah. is insane. And especially now that yeah. it's just becoming way more popular here in the States. It's like pretty much. It's so crazy to see how much yeah, has changed in the past, you know, nine, ten years. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. honestly, I think. 
I got into manga at the really at the right time because I was, you know, <laughs> I, I started working professionally in 2017. So yeah. you know, that, that was sort of in the midst of the boom, you know, totally. like my, my Hero Academia had been out, you know, Attack on Titan had been out. Um, and so it was just sort of building momentum and there's just been so much more and more and more and more manga coming out Yeah, that I really just like, I, I guess I got my foot in. Mm. At a point where I, I basically have stuff to do all the time because every every publisher is just like we you know we have half a billion books for you to do. I'm like, oh okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brandon, before you get out of here, we would be remiss if we didn't ask you, <laughs> Cody. All righty, I'm trying on some big words, Brandon. Please don't judge me, dude. Thank you so much. Um, to, we we need to ask you top maybe three. I know it's a lot of pressure. But what mm-hmm. are some of currently like your absolute favorite series, manga series that are out right now? To work on or just to read for pleasure? I mean, if you got time for both, you know, we can answer both. But let's start with to read, like okay. reading right now. To read. Um, so uh, I'm a big One Piece fan. Uh, One oh, Piece is probably, One Piece. I would say maybe my second or third favorite manga of all time. Uh, I've... Uh, I've been reading it since like 2012 or so. Uh, you know, I, I took a break for a while and I, I caught back up last year. And so I've been reading, I've been reading those chapters weekly and I've, I found a nice little group to just like, we, we all discuss the chapters and whatnot. Oh, uh, so that has been really, really fun. That's cool. nice. And uh, that's cool. I, I, despite working for, uh, working for Shonen Jump um, and, and working on a few series in Shonen Jump, I think one, one piece is probably the only series that I don't work on that I read <laughs> consistently. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll dip in and out of other stuff, but like once once 12 o'clock on Sunday hits, I'm like, one piece time. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, uh, as for the others, mm, mm. I know it's, it's a hard, a hard question. One. I, mean put, I should have just yeah. said one, but I said three. Why did I say three? Yeah. You could say Made one, or um, are, you, are you big like anime watcher? Do you think you read more than you watch? Um, or? I used to be more of an anime watcher. I <laughs> I don't have as much time anymore now, of course. Um, but yeah. I usually, what, what ends up happening is I'll, I'll pick out maybe like four or five uh, anime every season, and then I will inevitably not finish i'll be i'll be watching them all week to week and then i get busy and you know one they drop off one after another yeah well just in general like what have you completed like in the past that have been like your you know top you know favorite or just just one i think this one's really special because it is one that i watched almost like all all the way through the season that was coming out in january it was a show called wonder egg priority that i really liked Priority. Yeah. Of course, so I, those are really amazing. kind of finished because the the last episode doesn't come out until like next month. Yeah, so they, they sort of they sort of left it on unfinished because the production was behind. But uh, you know, oh, I, I loved watching that, and so I, again, original. that was one where a bunch of uh, my friends got into it at the same time, and I was like, oh, I should check this out, and it was like, oh wow, this is amazing. And so even even if things got a little weird towards the end, but that oh, that yeah. ride <laughs> week to week was really really fun. And that was, I think, the first time in a really long time that I kept up with an anime just like week to week. Um, yeah. Other than that, I would say uh, another recent favorite of mine is Megalobox. It's about, uh, uh, it's like a uh, Ashita no Joe remake I've with mech that. arms. It's funny because I've got I've got two series of mine that I do for Gin Press that are both having anime versions this uh-huh. season, which oh, are okay. uh, Eight Six and Combatants Will Be Dispatched, and I've been really interested in checking out the the anime versions of those. And, uh, eight, 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 six in particular looks like it has like a lot, like like a big production budget behind it. Oh. So the the clips I've been seeing have been really, really cool. And I'm like, wow, this kind of looks better than the manga version I worked on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all waiting for that kaiju number eight anime too. Oh Fingers crossed. yeah, oh. I will be very. I'll be very obnoxious on Twitter when, when, that, when that announcement comes out. I will be I'll be crying and bawling and being like, "Look, look at my baby, <laughs> read it, watch it." Read it, watch so it. I'm like, <laughs> we're the same way, and we don't even work on it. We just consume it. I know. If I worked on yeah. it, oh my, I would never stop talking about it. No, I would never yeah, stop. That's a- <laughs> I, I feel a little bit bad. I, I, I've tried to slow it down recently, but there's there's been times where it's like all I tweet about is Kaiju Don't I'm don't like, slow it down. This is people want to see it. <laughs> yeah. People want to read it. Don't slow it down. I, I, I try to spread things out as much as I can. Of like, well, even even maybe the manga that I'm not too much into. Uh, you know, I, I won't I won't say publicly which ones those are, but you know, <laughs> I, I, try to, I try to give like equal ish uh, equal ish like promotion. You know, because it really is just Attention. like hey. I really, I really like working on this, even if I don't necessarily like the story. Like right. I, I like working on manga just in general. So, you know, just because I don't like it maybe, or I'm not like 
over the moon about it doesn't mean that other people won't be so yeah i, I definitely I, I try to get the word out for stuff that i, I work on and try to push it well yeah. thank you so much brandon we don't like i said want to keep you for too long so thank you for being yeah. here dude thank, thank you for talking thank you with so us. much for having me this has been really fun thank you oh, thank you this is amazing yeah it was so amazing <laughs> talking to you for even like seeing your comment when you reached out the first time it was so cool yeah 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 um because obviously it's a series that we all love and just talking to you you're such a cool guy such a down-to-earth guy i mean it's just been great. Thank you again for doing this. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause yeah. for Brandon. Guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big, uh, I, this work really lends itself to being like, like I'm a big podcast podcast person. Like I just consume most, mostly podcasts about video games. And then uh, just like one random day, I was like, I wonder if people talk about Kaiju number eight on YouTube. And I was like, oh, wow, well, this is like a, podcast that has like really nice production value and you know oh. it's just like all the discussions are really fun so uh, thanks, i'm a fan man. i became a fan thank yeah, you so you. much man for real yeah, that yeah. means a lot <laughs> thank you thank you um all right brandon is there anything you want to maybe you know plug any work you want to plug a twitter you want to plug anything before yeah. we get you out of here so uh i'm i'm at brandon bovia on twitter uh it's just my name um i work on you know we, we talked primarily about kaiju number eight um, but I work on other series um, in Shonen Jump, like Hardboiled Cop and Dolphin and Dragon Ball Super. Oh, uh, yeah, I did <laughs> see that play. as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is so another I'm, huge I'm, series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, that, that's, so I, 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 love, I love Dragon Ball. So I, you know, I, I give that one my, my full effort yeah. every time I work on it. And then, you know, uh, gosh, there's so many other series that I work on. I work on, uh, there's an Assassin's Creed adaptation going on right now that's been really fun. Um, I work on a shoujo series called Snow White with the Red Hair. Oh, that, I've seen that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that one's really, really fun. Um, and like I said before, like uh, eight six, which currently has an anime coming out right now, and awesome. just I, I, I feel like like I, at the end of every year, I try to make a big post about like here are just everything that I worked yeah. on the entire year. Uh, but of course, you can you can look me up, and I've got like an anime news network page that has like all of all of the stuff that most of the stuff that I've ever worked on because uh, awesome. I can't I can't I can't remember it all off the top of my head but uh, yeah if you're interested in any of it definitely give it a shot because uh, I love manga and I love working on it well Brandon thank you so much you, uh, um we want and him to uh, we're gonna with... what we want oh huh Cody did you have something you want to add dude? <laughs> no I was uh no go to say your thing. Oh. <laughs> um thank you for being here again man and thank you everybody for watching and listening um we got more kaiju number eight videos that are coming to uh coming out soon too uh, and make sure to follow Brandon on Twitter. And that's going to do it for this episode. Round of applause one more time for Brandon. <laughs> Thank you so much. All Thank right. You. We'll see you guys in the next you, uh, video. Until next time. Do you guys want to do a little outro? Do we, real yeah, quick? should do we? Do you want to come up with one? We, we do. We, we come... usually do an outro that's always the same and never changes. Wink, wink. Um, it's just related about what we <laughs> yeah, had talked about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so let's see if we can all brainstorm um, one together. See. A little outro. Um, send me a letter. <laughs> Uh, hey. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Brandon See likes that. It. Second okay, likes okay. It. All right. All right. I wrote you a letter in a bottle. No. No. You, the first one. Yeah. No, no, no. And you're in it. You're in it. You're in it. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So send me. We're gonna say send me a letter. Send me a letter. Send me a letter. All right. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time, send, send me, me a letter. letter. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect.